Okay, so we're going to look at um, some parts of triangles here in the coordinate plane. And so we're going to start with the first one here, write the equation for median from E to GO. So I am going to be looking at this line here that goes from E to the median. So median means midpoint of GO. So I need a line that goes from here to about the middle of this side GO. I don't know what that is exactly, I'm just going to toss it up here. We're going to find that point first. So I know I'm going to use point E, but I need to find that median goes to the midpoint. So I need to find the midpoint of GO. So to do that, we use the formula for midpoint, which says you essentially average your x's and y's. That's kind of the way to remember it. So my point G is here at, it's really hard to read these points. Let me try to make my axes a little bit more clear. So G is at negative five, uh, one, two, three, negative four. And O is at four, negative one. Check to make sure I did that right. One, two, yeah. So the midpoint is going to be my the average of my x's and the average of my y's. So I'm going to take negative 5 plus 4 over 2 and negative 4 plus negative 1 over 2. So my midpoint is negative 1 half, negative 5 halves. So negative one-half would be over here to the left one-half and negative five-half that's negative two-and-a-half so one two-and-a-half I'm almost right on here just kind of guess but it's right about there okay so that's the midpoint here of this segment geo negative one-half negative five-halves okay so that's where my midpoint is I want to find the equation of this line right here so in order to write an equation I need a point and I need a slope. Okay? Or I need two points that I can use to find the slope. So one of the points I'm going to use is going to be this midpoint. I know it needs to go through that midpoint. Negative one half, negative five halves. In this case, I also have another point. I have E. And this coordinate for E is negative three, four. So I also have negative three. In order to find slope, I can either use those two points or I can kind of count my slope from my picture here. I'm going to go ahead and use those two points so I can make sure I have it exact, just in case there's a random little fraction there that I can't, can't tell as I look at the line. So to find slope, remember your formula for slope? You take your y values and subtract them, so I'm going to do 4 minus negative 5 halves. Okay. over your x values and subtract those, negative 3 minus negative 1 half. So the reason I did second point minus first one is so that I can get rid of these negatives here. Okay. So now it's 4 plus 5 halves, so let's see, I'm going to write that as a mixed number 6 and a half, over negative 3 plus a half, so negative 2 and a half. In order to divide those, I'm going to actually rewrite them again as improper fractions. 13 halves times the reciprocal here, so that was 5 halves, 2 fifths. So it's negative 13 fifths, which honestly I would never have gotten if I tried to count my slope here on my line. Okay, So my slope is negative 13 fifths. It is negative because it goes downhill left to right. So then I can use those two pieces of information, one of my points and a slope, to write the equation in, let's say, point slope form. So y minus y, I'm going to use the easy point here, y minus 4, equals slope times x minus x value. Okay, so you can leave it in this form. Or you could do some work here and I could distribute that negative 13 fifths. You know what, I think I'm just gonna leave it just like that. So that's point slope form. If you need a different form, then you would need to just take the time to distribute 
and move the four over and make that into a form that you know that your teacher wants, okay? Um, that's fine for me, point slope form is good enough. So that's finding median. Median goes from a point to the midpoint of the opposite side. So that's why we had to find midpoint first. For our second example here, write the equation for the altitude. Well, altitude, there we go. Altitude is from the vertex, so from O, and when I go over to GE, it's perpendicular to the, that side. So I'm going from O, and I want a line that's perpendicular to EG. So I want something kind of here. Right? So I don't really know what this point is here, and it's hard to find that point exactly. But what I do know is that because it's perpendicular, I know that these two lines are at a right angle. And what I know about perpendicular lines is that they have opposite reciprocal slopes. So if I can find the slope of EG, then I can find the slope of this line here. So first, slope of EG. So to find slope, again, I need my two points here. We wrote those on the last one. Negative 5, negative 4, and 3, negative 3, 4. So this slope is y minus y over x minus x. Minus my negatives makes those plus. 8 over negative 2, so my slope is a negative 4. Okay. That doesn't make sense. Oh, that's a positive 2. That's why. Nope, that's not right. Four plus four. That would be a positive 2. 8 over 2 would be 4. Oh, yeah, that is. I was looking at the wrong line. <laughs> I was looking at my blue line. I'm looking at my purple line. Color coding should work. Up 4 and over 1. Up 4 over 1. Yes, that's right. Silly me. Okay, so it is four. Moving on to the next step. Whew. Even teachers have a little moments of panic for a second. All right, so first I found that slope. Then I know that the slope of, of my altitude is opposite reciprocal of that. So that would be negative one-fourth. That's what I need for the blue line. So the slope of my altitude is negative one-fourth. Okay. And then three, I want to write my equation. So the equation of the blue line here. And so my equation, I need a point, which is O, because I know that point is on this line. So my point's going to be four, negative one. And I need a slope. My slope is negative one fourth. So because I have point and slope, I again can write this in point slope form. Y minus negative one equals slope times X minus four. So I can change that instead of minus a negative, I can write that as y plus 1. And that's my answer for the slope of, or the equation of this blue line right here. All right. So altitude, find the slope of the side of the triangle that you're needing to use. Get the opposite reciprocal of that for the altitude because it's perpendicular. So that's the slope of the altitude through this point O give you your equation. All right, let's look at another one. What if I want to write the perpendicular bisector of EO? So now I'm looking at this third side here, EO, okay, which is a side I haven't used yet. Perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular means opposite reciprocal slope. So I need to find the slope of EO. So again, I'm going to use my points here negative 3, 4, 4, negative 1, and I'm going to find this slope first. y minus y over x minus x. So I get 5 over negative 7, so negative 5 sevenths is my slope, which I could get by counting that out. So that's my slope, which means the slope of my 
perpendicular bisector that I need is going to be the opposite reciprocal of that, a positive 7 fifths. Okay. So that tells me it's perpendicular. The bisector, bisector says that I need to find the midpoint. So I need to find the midpoint of EO. And so the midpoint of EO, again, think of it as the average of your endpoints. So negative 3 plus 4 over 2 and 4 plus negative 1 over 2. So my midpoint is 1 half and 3 halves. So if I plot that point 1 half, 3 halves right here, that's my midpoint. Okay. So my equation has a point 1 half, 3 halves, okay. and a slope of 7 fifths. So it goes through this point, 1 half, 3 halves, and it has a slope of 7 fifths. So again, I just use that information to write my equation in point-slope form. y minus 3 halves equals 7 fifths x minus 1 half. Okay. Fix that a little bit. There we go. Okay. And that's really all you need, point-slope form. Okay. Again, you could simplify it or distribute and combine to get a different form, say slope-intercept form, but point-slope form is fine. All right. So that is perpendicular bisector. Next question, is the triangle scalene isosceles or equilateral? So this is a, a comparison of side lengths. So I need to compare the lengths of the sides. To compare the lengths of the sides, I need to, to be able to find the distance between all of my points. So if I want to find the distance between my points, I need to use the distance formula. So remember distance formula, square root of x1 plus, not plus, minus, x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. So I just need to plug in my x and y values, which I know from the points I have, to find the distance. So the distance of the length segment EO is going to be subtract my x's, so negative 3 minus 4, and square it. Subtract my y's, 4 minus negative 1 square that. So I get negative 7 squared is 49, 4 plus 1, 5 squared is 25. So square root of 74. I don't need to know that decimal, just write it like that and leave it that way for now. Distance of GO, same thing. I'm going to subtract negative 5 minus 4 squared and negative 4 minus negative 1 squared. So make that plus 1. Okay. Square root of negative 5 plus a negative 4. So 9 squared is 81. 4 plus, so negative 3 squared, 9. Square root of 90. And the same thing for EG. Last one negative 5 minus negative 3 squared plus 4, negative 4 minus 4 squared. So we get negative 2 squared is 4, and then 8 squared is 64. And so that would be square root of 68. Notice they're all different, and so because they're all different, it's scalene. Okay, And so that's how we find these different parts of triangles um, in our coordinate plane.